Hello everyone and welcome to Understanding Methylation, the key to health. I'm Dr. Adam C. Many of you are watching this video and you're struggling with your health. You may have tried all sorts of different detoxes and cleanses. You probably tried all sorts of nutritional supplements, medicines, creams, and nothing seems to work. You may be struggling with an autoimmune disease or you may have a history of fatigue problems that no one can seem to put their finger on. You also may have cancer or heart disease. With this video, I'm hoping to shed more light on the root cause of a lot of that uh, that's happening in your body, and it comes back to your genetics. Um, a lot of times what ha is happening, your methylation cycle is not running correctly uh, from some genetic defects that you've uh, been handed down from mom and dad. And so what we want to do and get to the heart of that is understand what's happening, how we test for it, and how we can improve uh, the issues that you're currently dealing with. To give you a little bit of background about myself, I am a board certified chiropractic physician uh, here in the state of North Carolina. I've been in private practice since 2005 and my office, is, my office focuses mainly on applied kinesiology. We also look at functional medicine and functional neurology to get to the root cause of your problem. I am a member of the Neurometabolic Supergroup that was founded by Dr. Michael Johnson. Uh, who is a board certified chiropractic neurologist and he has written several books. Um, they're all kind of very uh, similar in their theme. So you can beat fibromyalgia naturally, you can beat thyroid disorders naturally, you can beat uh, cancer naturally, you can beat autoimmunity naturally, and you can beat diabetes naturally. Uh, if you want more information, two great sources to check out is AskDrJohnson.com and you can also go uh, to LifeChangingCare.com if you're watching this video in another state. Uh, you can look for a provider in your state that does similar work. So let's discuss methylation and nutrigenomics. And what nutrigenomics uh, is is how nutrients affect your genes. So methylation is absolutely vital to how you detoxify, to how you express your genes, to how you combat infections, and how you prevent cardiovascular disease. Methylation is a process of adding methyl groups to a substrate, a substrate such as DNA, RNA, protein, lipids, to get that expression of, of your DNA or, or RNA. And methylation is vital for your bodies in reference to DNA and RNA synthesis, for brain chemical production, for hormonal breakdown, for uh, creation of immune cells. It's also involved in the uh, creation of the protective coating over our nerves and for detoxification and for energy production. Methyl groups are formed by the stomach. So from your hydrochloric acid is how you cleave methyl groups. So if your stomach acid is too low, your methylation ability is going to be low. So we've got to get your digestion better to get your methylation up and running. Besides having low stomach acid, how are methyl groups depleted? The number one reason we usually see it is a poor diet. Most people are eating processed foods, they're eating genetically modified organisms, they're eating high fructose corn syrup, they're eating trans fats. Diet has the largest impact on our physiology. We've got to get that better in order to get you better. Second thing we usually see is a high level of emotional stress from all the things that we're bombarded with. Third thing we usually see are single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are SNPs. Uh, these are, in a sense, genetic mis misspellings. They're not mutations, they're just a misspelling uh, where it's an error but not enough to cause a huge detriment uh, to the body. And this is what our video will mainly focus on. So when poor methylation occurs, we see a lot of conditions associated with it. We see cancer, you can see diabetes, you can see thyroid disorders, neurologic disorders, you can see hormone dysfunction, autoimmunity, uh, chemical sensitivity and allergies, you can see fibromyalgia. We can also see chronic fatigue syndrome, you can see chronic pain syndrome, your ADD, your autism, your learning disabilities such as dyslexia, we see insomnia, a lot of women can have miscarriages as a result, we see depression, anxiety, we see Lyme disease. Lyme disease is another one. This is vital for Lyme patients because if they can't detoxify correctly, they're never going to clear it. And again, going into chronic infections, you're not going to clear the infection until you get you detoxing correctly. And heart disease, and we'll go over uh, the connection to heart disease. So how do I address these problems in my office? One of the first things that we look at is we kind of look at it three-dimensionally. We look at it from a methylation standpoint, both genetically and biochemically, and then we also have to rebuild, and we have to do that through functional neurology. And that is the way we're going to get you better. So let's look at some lab tests that we use in my office. 
First thing we start with is a comprehensive blood chemistry. And what we do here uh, is a lot of blood work. It tells us a lot about you and your physiology. We look at a CBC, which is a complete blood count, with a differential and platelets. We also look at a com comprehensive metabolic panel, which tests 14 different analytes, looking from your blood sugar to your electrolytes, your liver enzymes, to kidney function. We also look at some inflammatory markers, C-reactive protein being one of those, homocysteine being another one. This is actually a direct uh, component off that methylation cycle. And we also see or look at your blood sugar and giving a 90-day average, which is your hemoglobin A1C. We also look at your vitamin D, look at your uric acid. We also look at your magnesium, your GGT, your phosphorus. And we do a complete look at, the, at your iron status, looking at iron, total iron binding capacity, looking at your saturation, and the best predictor of iron status being ferritin, we also look at that. We also look at your ability to clot, which is going to be tested through fibrinogen. And we do a complete thyroid panel. Not just TSH and T4, we look at TSH, total T3, total T4, free T3, free T4. We also look at your reverse T3, your free thyroxine index, your T3 uptake, and also we look at the antibodies because we want to screen to make sure uh, you're not autoimmune that's causing the issues with thyroid. And another one that we do like to look at, uh, especially when testing methylation, is ammonia because uh, one of the defects uh, can cause a lot of ammonia to uh, build up in the bloodstream. The other thing that we usually can look at too is the methylation profile. This is done in blood. Uh, it's done by a company called Doctors Data. Uh, they look at your cysteine, your methionine. They'll look at SAM. They'll look at your SAW. These are again components of that methionine cycle. They'll look at homocysteine. They'll look at cystathione. And then the SAM to SAW ratio. And this is a good job. Again, we can see what is happening biochemically. And if we are moving in the right direction, the biochemistry will change. Another one that's a really good test is the spectrocell nutrient test. And what we look at here is looking at some of your vitamin status, your folate, your B12, your B6, and other vitamins such as vitamin C. All of these things play a role in your methylation. Uh, we look at mineral status such as copper, zinc. Uh, it looks at antioxidant status, amino acids. It looks at your carbohydrate metabolism, your fatty acids, and metabolites from that. And that's for more information, you can check out spectrocell.com. The NutriVal uh, test done through Genova, it's a first morning uh, void uh, urine test. This one's a really good one. It does a metabolic analysis profile, which is an organic acid profile. It also looks at your amino acids. And again, amino acids are going to be very, very important to methylation because uh, we want to make sure what your amino acid status looks like as to what your overall status for methylation is going to be. It uh, looks at an essential and metabolic fatty acid analysis. It also does an elemental analysis, looking at toxic metals, but also nutrient uh, components as well. So again, looking at some of those um, things like zinc, copper, boron, and other necessary elements. And it does an oxidative stress. So it kind of tells us, is your body undergoing oxidative stress? For more information on that, you can go to gdx.net for Genova Diagnostics. Another one that we do is heavy metal testing. And again, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but heavy metals will bind to the same places where you can have that genetic misspelling as well, or that SNP. So you may be clear or have a normal um, expression of that gene, but if you have heavy metals, certain heavy metals will actually bind to that same area and create the same exact problem, even though your DNA or genetics tells us you're fine. So what we look at there is usually mercury, aluminum, cadmium, lead, uranium, bar uh, barium, thallium, and much more. We'll t you know, kind of run through the gamut of heavy metals. We usually do that multiple different ways. You can do it through a urine provocation. You can do it through a fecal metal test from a stool analysis. You can also look at it through hair and also through blood. Uh, two companies that we use in our office is Doctors Data and also Genova Diagnostics. And here's where we're, you know, uh, focusing our attention on is the genetic test. So um, when you do genetic testing, uh, you can look at your methionine cycle, you can look at your folic acid cycle, your BH4, which is your neurotransmitter cycle, and your urea cycle, and much more. There's many other things that are ran uh, along with the, the methylation profile. Uh, it's a very inexpensive salivary test. Uh, I usually just recommend people go to 23andMe.com. Um, Ancestry.com, I think, does something very similar. Uh, but we like 23andMe and uh, you get the raw genetic data from them. Uh, you can punch that into multiple different sites. One that we usually um, like is Livewello. Uh, for about $20, you can pay them to uh, give you a nice printout of that raw genetic data, and it tells us exactly where uh, those SNPs are in your genetic profile. So let's discuss functional neurology, because this is part of that triad that we look at, and it's, it's important. So your brain, brain controls every aspect 
of your body. And you must have fuel and activation for your brain to function properly. So let's kind of use an analogy. If you think of your brain as a house, um, if, you're, if you get a fire that breaks out into the kitchen of your home, you're on the phone calling 911, getting the fire department over there to put the fire out. And this analogy, methylation dysfunction, is that fire creating inflammation. So you think of the fire as inflammation. So once the fire is out, the fire department does their job and they do a phenomenal job of doing that. Uh, you don't have them you know, stick around and start rebuilding. Their job is done, they leave. You're usually gonna call someone to come back in and help you rebuild that area of the kitchen that the fire broke out in. So you have to get somebody to come back in and do that. And that's what you know, functional neurology is. It is that rebuilding aspect to healing your brain. It's the only through brain-based therapies can you actually return to a state of optimal well-being. So we can put the fire out, but there's still going to be damage from where that fire was. We've got to rebuild it. We've got to get all the, the smoke damage and the charred uh, components out of there, put new ones in. It's the same with the nervous system. We can get the inflammation down, but we want to rebuild so your brain functions better and you return to an optimal state of well-being. So brain-based therapies can include unilateral adjustments. Yes, we do adjust people. We are chiropractors. Uh, we do core exercises are phenomenal in the nervous system, doing various eye exercises. You can do vibration in different parts of the body. We use a device called Rebuilder to get the nerves to turn back on, to fire back to the brain. Uh, we can also use light therapy, color therapy, spin therapy. There's a ton of things that we can do in the office to rebuild your nervous system. So let's look at some specific genetic markers that will influence your health. First one we're going to look at is one that you may have heard of. It's very common. Uh, it's called MTHFR. And these are the alleles that usually find those uh, genetic abnormalities or misspellings. Uh, the C677T, uh, if you're homozygous uh, here, you get about a 30% reduction. So uh, homozygous is going to have two copies of that. If you're C677T and you're heterozygous, this means you have one copy, you're going to have a 70% uh, reduction. And the A129HC, if you're homozygous, you're going to get a 10% reduction. The A129HC, if you're heterozygous, you're going to get a 30% reduction. And if you're mixed, if you're both heterozygous for the C677T and the A129HC, you're going to get a 40% reduction in the ability to convert um, folic acid over. So again, MTHFR causes reduction in the ability to generate folic acid and the ability to convert homocysteine back to methionine. So if you can't do that, again, this is a toxic intermediate. Uh, it's going to create a lot of problems. They've linked it to diabetes, to osteoporosis. We see it in Alzheimer's patients. This thing's pretty nasty. You want to get it converted over as, you know, as much as, you, as possible. Most everybody has this in their blood. We just don't want it to go too high. When it starts to go too high, then we know there's problems. Usually our support that we're going to do is going to be with a methylated form of folic acid called uh, 5-MT-HF. Uh, and we're also going to use either a methylated B12 or a hydroxylated B12. We won't go into all the, the details of who needs what and when, uh, but some people need methylated, some don't. Uh, and then P5P, which is a form of B6 that is uh, far better absorbed and works a lot better in this whole methylation profile. Another defect we see is the MTRR. It's a uh, reductive methylation uh, of methionine. So it kind of works on converting that back over. This is where your B12 is going to become necessary. So it requires the additional B12 to do that. Again, we're going to use either a, meth a methylated form or a uh, hydroxylated form. COMT, which is catechol-methyltransferase, is involved in controlling estrogen levels, neurotransmitters, and toxin elimination. Uh, to support this, we need to support your neurotransmitters. We've got to balance your hormones. And we have to look at other things too, VDR being one that can play a role in this uh, as well. BHMT, which uh, is going to work on converting homocysteine back to methionine. Um, to usually support this, you're going to use either trimethylglycine, you may use some zinc, some choline. Again, that's why we test to see what the statuses are and get that uh, improved so that that cycle can uh, be converted back. MAOA and MAOB, these help to break down both serotonin. Serotonin is going to be MAOA. Uh, dopamine is going to be MAOB. Uh, you're going to see aggression, antisocial behavior, some depression is going to be associated here. So if you're taking SSRIs or Wellbutrin or some type of dopamine reuptake inhibitor, uh, you definitely want to check this. Uh, you're going to want to reduce tryptophan or tyrosine uh, containing foods depending on if you have MAOA or MAOB. 
uh, and you, for women, they may need some progesterone support. So this again plays some role in the hormone formation as well. DAO, which is diamine oxidase, this is involved in the conversion of histamine. So uh, many of you know, okay, I understand allergies, pollen, those things can trigger a histamine response. Food does as well. Food does contain histamine. Uh, so we want to support with diamine oxidase uh, if you do have that uh, issue, especially from food. Quercetin is also going to be very helpful to kind of calm that histamine response down. And you want to definitely avoid high histamine containing foods. SOD, which is superoxide dismutase, is involved with mitochondrial function and your ability to detoxify. So you want to support this with mitochondrial nutrients. You're going to want to use N-acetylcysteine, alpha-lipoic acid, and glutathione can be helpful here. VDR, which is your receptor that transports vitamin D. Um, you're going to see issues such as poor intestinal calcium absorption. You're going to see poor T-cell proliferation, so it is involved in your immune system. And you're going to see a decreased cytokine uh, secretion. You're going to want to support with high quality D3. And again, you want to look at some of those dopamine precursors because VDR does play a role into MAOB and also into COMT or catecholomethyltransferase. So again, something you want to look at. Again, we'll go over this with you when we get your results back. NOS, which is your nitric oxide um, enzyme that converts uh, arginine into nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is the molecule that resists plaque formation, uh, re resists uh, vasospasm, and abnormal clotting. So this is where it comes into play with heart disease. So you want to go to, if you have this issue, you want to support it with nitric oxide precursors so you can get this uh, to open back up. So this is why heart disease occurs to begin with because the uh, vessel starts to clot, you get the spasming that occurs, and you're going to get uh, plaque formation. So again, this is how you prevent it, and it's just a simple genetic test that can tell you whether you're going to have to do this or whether you may be a little bit better off than other people. In addition to genetic SNPs, you can also have a heavy metal issue that will bind to the same areas of these defects, and we had mentioned that earlier. So let's look at some of the heavy metals and some of the binding sites that they like to go to. Lead likes to block the utilization of the following. It likes to do B12 and MTRR. It also likes the nitric oxide enzyme. So again, heart disease, lead can be a huge problem. Blood pressure, lead can be a huge problem. We also see it with the CBS enzyme and also the effect of dopamine and insulin growth factor uh, as they come in and affect that methionine or methylation cycle. It can block and bind those. Aluminum likes to block at uh, the DHPR, which is in the neurotransmitter cycle. It also likes to bind, uh, bind dopamine and insulin growth factor, again, when they're working at MTAR. Mercury, we're going to see it blocking it at dopamine and insulin growth factor, and there are multiple other sites. This one's a nasty one. Um, we all know the dangers and you know, issues with mercury. This is a bad thing. Uh, you're going to get a lot of issues where this can bind and, and cause problems, in addition to any defects you have. In order for you to regain your, your health, you need to tackle your nutrigenomic needs, you need to detoxify heavy metals, and you need to rehab your brain. The very process of doing this is very complex, so do not attempt to do this on your own. You're going to really, it's going to take you a long time, it's very, very confusing. I mean, we've really simplified this. This pathway is, I mean, some people have been in it, they're kind of unraveling more and they fully don't understand everything with it. I mean, it's a very, very complex pathway. Uh, you need someone who can help you and we can help you with that. So you need a doctor that is well versed in addressing all three of these components. And only through proper testing and treatment can you overcome your health crisis. So again, what is the value to you? Does, you know, do you see the value in this test and, and going through this process? Are you ready to, to end the, the struggle that you're dealing with day in and day out? Just to give you some insight, insurance does offer some coverage, and each plan is different. We can't tell you exactly uh, on this video what your insurance coverage is going to be. We can tell you just based on an estimate, even if you don't have insurance coverage, treatment can average anywhere from $200 to $500 a month if you finance that at 12 months. So just to get everything up front, uh, we give you an idea of cost so that you know, but we do have coverage that insurance can um, tackle some of this for you as well. And I can help you with that component of nutrigenomics, helping you detoxify your heavy metals and helping your brain rehab correctly. So I'd like to extend an offer to you for watching this video. If you mention this video, you'll receive an evaluation and report of findings for $60. Uh, if you decide you want to purchase additional treatment, you have the legal right to change your mind within three days and receive a full refund. Uh, federal plans are excluded from this and it is a $200 value. If you're interested, and setting up an appointment, please give us a call. Our number is 919-662-0520 to schedule your evaluation, and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you.